Hi everyone and welcome to this first video in a series of tutorials I'm putting together for our computer vision using OpenCV. My name is Tony Meilenberg. I'm a graduate student at Portland State University. I also teach part-time at Portland State University and uh, have a day job at Intel Corporation. But for the computer vision, um, my doctorate work is in machine learning and computer vision is a great way to practice machine learning algorithms. So. When I was going through and learning about OpenCV, some of the best materials that I found were online on YouTube. Um, they weren't very complete, but the, the material that was there was very good. So I decided it would be good to put together some video tutorials for the parts that I thought were missing or could be augmented. So I want to start by showing you the site here. OpenCV is free. The tools to develop using OpenCV are free as well. Visual Studio Community is free and it's all open source, the uh, OpenCV code. It's made it very easy to do uh, computer uh, vision coding, much more, much easier than it's been in the past. So I wanted to start by showing a few videos of some of the applications of computer vision to give you a taste of this before we get into the actual setup and writing of the code. So <clears throat> in this example, um, uh, the guy goes in to the lab and he's able to wave his hand and the spaceship follows it. He's able to move his face around and based on the face facial features um, the little character follows that. And then on the tablet here he's able to zoom in because of the dual cameras on the back. Um, this is an interesting one where uh, this guy posts a video of the code that he wrote that basically allows him to draw on the screen. It uses finger uh, gesture recognition and so when he has his fingers apart, it's not drawing, and when he puts them together, it does draw. <clears throat> um, another example of this gesture recognition is here. Um, he puts his hands up, and it's able to find his left hand and his right hand, whether his hands are open or closed. He does a few other things. That... And this video shows some of the power of computer vision when it comes to uh, autonomous vehicles or some of the cars that they're putting together for, say, uh, autopilot. They're very expensive using LiDAR, but uh, as you can see with cameras, it's able to go through and detect SUVs and trucks and cars. And there's some other videos online that show detection of stop sign, uh, speed limit, and other things like that. Uh, for this one, <clears throat> this professor at NYU has all of the computer vision code right on his laptop that allows him to go through and detect objects. So on the right hand side here you can see it's uh, basically statistically figuring out the probability that this is a notepad or I saw it show a space bar or some other different things. And he goes around the room and he points this camera at like a coffee mug and a backpack and it's able to successfully detect those items. This one shows how quickly it can calculate. So in this example, he has a Sudoku puzzle. It does optical character recognition. And then it's able to basically, his code is able to solve the puzzle and then superimpose the numbers back onto the puzzle. And this is all really easy, or pretty easy, in OpenCV today. They have so many libraries that basically abstract and make this uh, detection and these things simple. So here's a video of the, this is similar to what the Connect can do. And I'll probably go through and give some examples of Connect as well. Um, he's going through and showing the skeleton. So it's able to find the upper arm, lower arm, fingers of different people. And this one's even more interesting for me because it shows some of the machine learning where not only can it detect uh, baseball players, it can actually detect the actions so in this case, catch and run. In this case, hit and pitch. And you can see it will go through and it will cycle through these different actions, which is, um, of course, very important for artificial intelligence or coming up with systems that can more accurately predict things that are going around on in the world around them. For this one, I, I brought up this video just to show you how fast the detection can be. And so in this case, she's hitting a ping pong ball and does a really great job of tracking it faster than the 25 frames per second or however fast our eyes can see. 
Uh, in this video, it shows a car that's being warned that it should break and pull over. <clears throat> this guy's wearing uh, augmented reality glasses. So then he comes in here to the pool table, gets a pool stick and all the balls put in place, and his glasses are able to actually see the tra trajectory that the ball will take based on the angle of his pool stick, given how hard he hits it. Another interesting one, uh, this guy wearing Microsoft uh, is augmented gla reality glasses. He comes into his room and the glasses scan the room, <clears throat> and they superimpose a game, Minecraft game, on top of it, and then he's able to interact with the Minecraft world in his living room. So there are lots of potential applications here. One that I wanted to show now, um, and we'll go through and show some of the components uh, and tools that you'll need to do something like this is a program that Google has posted called Visual Control and that's the first one or what I showed at the beginning here so I'm gonna go through and show how this one works basically you can go through and it captures pictures so let me look directly at the camera here and hit this and we'll just call this one front.jpg and it will store it away in the folder here uh, now I can look to the left and click it and we'll call this one left.jpg and get one me looking to the right now so what you're seeing here with the red and the green yellow and the blue is it's going through and using a har cascade uh, machine learning to recognize something uh, but now we want to uh, recognize a specific image and do a comparison so now we use machine learning to train the recognizer which in this case was instant because there are only three images for it to work with. And now I can go click the recognize visible faces and it recognizes front and left and right. I can add another one now, maybe with my mouth open. And you'll see when I hit the, on the recognize with my mouth, op my mouth open, it's not going to find it because I haven't trained the recognizer. So I hit train recognizer again. Now it will add this image with my mouth open to the list and now it's able to successfully recognize with my mouth open. So we'll talk about um, the different code uh, in the next upcoming tutorials that can be used to do something like this. That's it for today though.